I was telling you in in the session which started with uh, with pelvis and perineum uh, that it will take probably two or three sessions but um, since our equipment is taking from 20 to 30 minutes the filming uh, it's going to be 60 minutes probably three sessions per lecture therefore it's going to take a little bit more sessions so just check on uh, the, uh, the chapter the part that we are talking about right and we are going to continue with the uh, after 20 minutes uh, lecture and we are going to uh, we were talking about lateral pelvic walls this is part 3 pelvis and uh, perineal right and therefore on lateral pelvic walls we were saying right and between all this information that the obturator internus muscle cover and the pad most of the lateral pelvic walls and medial to these muscles was the obturator nerves and vessels and, and the other branches of the internal iliac vessel and we're continuing saying that each obturator internus passes posteriorly from the lesser pelvis uh, through the lesser sciatic foramen and turns sharply laterally to attach to the greater trochanter of the femur. On the posterior pelvic wall, the posterior pelvic wall uh, is formed by the sacrum and coccyx adjacent parts of the iliac and the sacroiliac joints and their associated ligaments. The piriformis muscles covers and those paths swell posterolaterally. Each muscle leaves the lesser pelvis through the greater sciatic foramen to attach to the upper border of the greater trochanter of the femur. Medial to the piriformis muscle are the nerves of the sacral plexus. This muscle forms a muscular bed for this nerve uh, network. The pelvic floor. The pelvic floor is formed by the funnel shaped pelvic diaphragm, which consists of the levator, any and constituous muscles, the fascia covering the superior and inferior aspects of these muscles. The pelvic diaphragm stretches between the pubis anteriorly and the coccyx posteriorly and from one lateral pelvic wall to the other. This gives the pelvic diaphragm the appearance of a pune, you know, shaped from this attachment. The levator ani, a broad muscular sheet, is the largest part or most important muscle in the pelvic floor. Its parts are designed according to the direction and attachment of its fibers. The levator ani is attached to the internal surface of lesser pelvis and forms most of the pelvic floor. The elevator ani consists of three parts. The pubococcygeus, the main part of the elevator ani, arises from the posterior aspect of the body of the pubis and passes back almost horizontally. The puborectalis, consisting of the thickened medial most part of the pubococcygeus, unites with its partner to form the U-shaped muscular sling that passes posterior to the anorectal junction. The iliococcygeus, the posterior part of the levator ani, is thin and often poorly developed. The levator ani forms a muscular sling for supporting the amniopelvic viscera, resist increases in intraabdominal pressure, helps to hold the pelvic viscera in position. Acting together, the parts of the levator ani raise the pelvic floor, thereby assisting the anterolateral abdominal muscle in compressing the abdominal and pelvic contents.
This action is an important part of forced expiration. Coughing, sneezing, vomiting, urinating, defecating, and fixation of the trunk during strong movements of the upper limbs. The liver and knee also has important function in the voluntary control of urination, fecal continence, um, defecation, and urine support. Take a look in your atlas, the pelvic floor and walls, the obturator membrane, inferior pubic ligaments, ischial tuberosity, the tendinous arc of levator ani, obturator internal, the puborectalis, pubococcygeus, iliococcygeus. Take a look at all the muscles and ligaments, right? Uh, take a look, the medial view, the median view. Muscle of lesser pelvis, the obturator internals, uh, the floor of the male pelvis, the main part of the level of um, Take a look of the pelvic diaphragm, rectum, and canal. Take a look at the inferior view, the coronal section of the pelvis through it. The rectum and anal canal offset the levator ani and the ischioanal fossae, the fat filled spaces around the wall of the canal. Take a look about the puborectalis muscle. This part of the liver ani unites with its partner to form a U shape sling around the anorectal junction. The puborectalis is responsible for the anorectal angle, which is important in maintaining the fecal continence. Relaxation of this muscle during defecation results in strengthening of the anorectal junction. In your atlas, take a look at the nerves and, and the nerve plexuses of the pelvis somatic nerves around the sacral and coccygeal nerve plexuses and the pelvic part of the sympathetic trunk located in the pelvis. The pelvic nerves, the pelvis is innervated mainly by the sacral and coccygeal nerves and the pelvic part of the autonomic nervous system. The periformis and coccygeous muscles form a bed for the sacral and coccygeal nerve plexuses. The ventral rami of the S2 and S3 nerves emerge between the digitation of these muscles. The descending part of L4 nerve unites with the ventral ramus of L5 nerve to form the thick cord like lumosacral trunk. It passes inferiorly anterior to the ala of the sacrum where the lumbosacral trunk joins the sacral plexus. The sacral plexus, the sacral plexus is located on the posterior wall of the lesser pelvis where it is closely related to the anterior surface of the piriformis. The two main nerves of the sacral plexus the sciatic and pudental lie external to the parietal of pelvic fascia. Much branches of the sacral plexus lead the pelvis through the greater sciatic foramen. The sciatic nerve, the largest and broadest nerve in the body, is formed by the ventral rami of L4 and S3 that converge on the anterior surface of the piriformis. Most commonly, the sciatic nerve passes through the greater sci sciatic foramen inferior to the piriformis to enter the gluteal region. It then descends along the posterior aspects of the thigh to supply the posterior aspects of the lower limb. The pudental nerve is derived from the anterior divisions of the ventral rami of S2 through S4. It accompanies the internal pudental artery and leads the pelvis through the greater sciatic foramen between the periformis and coccygeus muscle. The pudendal nerve, the main nerve of the perineum, 
and the chief sensory nerve of the external genitalia. Of hooks around this discal spinous acrospinous ligaments and enters the perineum throughout the lesser sciatic forme. It supplies the skin and muscles of the perineum and ending at the dorsal nerve of the penis or clitoris. Is the chief sensory nerve of the external genitalia. The superior gluteal nerve arises from the posterior division of the ventral rami of L4 through S1 and leads the pelvis through the greater sciatic foramen, superior to the piriformis. It supplies to muscles in the gluteal region, the gluteus medium and minimus and the tensor of the fascia lata. The inferior gluteal nerve arises from the posterior divisions of the ventral rami of L5 through S2 and leaves the pelvis to the greater sciatic foramen inferior to the piriformis and superficial to the sciatic nerve. Take a look in your atlas, the autonomic nerves the superior and inferior hypogastric plexus and the left and right hypogastric nerves joining the superior hypogastric plexus to the inferior hypogastric plexus. The pelvic plexuses, including the large inferior hypogastric plexus, consist of both sympathetic and parasympathetic fibers. Take a look in your atlas. There are some key uh, there are some uh, rectangles which contain different kinds of colors in where uh, they have been colored uh, the somatic cells or, or uh, 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 right, the sympathetic system, the parasympathetic and the mixed aut autonomic right. All these uh, networks of uh, nerves right, are already there, right? to uh, uh, explain in your atlas the type of function all these nerves have in the uh, uh, body. Take a look uh, the nerve uh, innervation around how uh, from the uh, column right uh, you see from L4 all the way down to C1 right uh, all the uh, networks of uh, innervations, right, which come out from different parts, and along with the nerves, right, the sciatic, the superior gluteal, the inferior gluteal, the, the nerve to piriformis, and all of those ones. Uh, take a look at the abdominopelvic arteries, right, in the um, anterior view and the posterior view, right? You can see, right, how these arteries uh, go around with all these names and very clearly, right? So, therefore, we are uh, continuing right, with the description, right, of uh, the inferior gluteal nerve, and we're saying that the companies also the inferior gluteal artery and breaks up into several branches that supply the overlying gluteus maximus muscle. The obturator nerve, the obturator nerve arises from the lumbar plexus in the abdomen, right, and enters the lesser pelvis. It runs in the extraperitoneal flat along the lateral wall of the pelvis to the obturator canal where it divides into anterior and posterior parts that leaves the pelvis through this canal and supplies the medial side and muscles. The obturator canal is the opening in the obturator membrane through which the obturator nerves pass from the pelvic cavity into the tight. The coccygeal plexus the coccygeal plexus is a small network of nerve fibers formed by the ventral rami of S4 and S5 and the constitutional nerves. It lies on the pelvic surface of the 
plastic jewels and supplies this muscle part of the elevator ani and the sacrococcygeal joint. The anococcygeal nerves arising from this plexus pierce the sacrococcygeal ligament and supply a small area of skin in the coccygeal region. Pelvic autonomic nerves, the sacrosympathetic drums, are the inferior continuation of the lumbar sympathetic drums. Each of the sacral trunk is diminished in size from that of the lumbar trunk and usually has four sympathetic ganglia. The sacral trunks descend on the pelvic surface of the sacrum just medial to the pelvic sacral foramina and converge to form the small medial ganglion in part of the ganglion. Anterior to the coccyx, the sacral sympathetic trunk descend posterior to the sacrum to the rectum in the extraperitoneal connective tissue and then gray rami communicates to each of the ventral rami of the sacral and coccygeal nerves. They also send small branches to the median sacral artery and the inferior hypogastric plexus. Um, the function prior, primarily of the sacral sympathetic drums is to provide postsynaptic fibers to the sacral plexus for sympathetic innervation of the lower limb. The hypogastric plexus uh, superior and inferior are networks of autonomic nerves, the main part of the superior hypogastric pleasure lies just inferior to the bifurcation of the aorta and descends into the pelvis. This plexus is the inferior prolongation of the intermesenteric plexus, which also receives the L3 and L4 splenic nerves branches from the superior hypogastric plexus enters the pelvis and descends anterior to the sacrum as the left and right hypogastric nerves. In males, these nerves descend lateral to the rectum within the hypogastric sheets, right, and then spread in a fan-like fashion as the inferior hypogastric plexus. Exterior of these plexuses collectively refers to as the pelvic plexuses. Pass to the prostate seminal vesicles. Imperolateral surface of the urinary bladder. In females, the cervix of the uterus and the lateral cornices of the vagina take the place of the prostate and seminal vesicles in relation to these plexuses. The pelvic splenic nerves contains parasympathetic fibers derived from the S2, S3, and S4 spinal cord segments and visceral afferent fibers from cell bodies in the spinal ganglia of the corresponding spinal nerves. The contribution from the third uh, sacral nerve is usually the largest. The pelvic splenic nerves merge with the hypogastric nerve to form the inferior hypogastric and plexuses. The inferior hypogastric plexuses contain both sympathetic and parasympathetic fibers, which passes along the branches of the internal iliac arteries to form subplexuses. Uh, on the pelvic area. The pelvic arteries, four main arteries, enter the lesser pelvis. The internal iliac and ovarian arteries are paired, and the median sacral and superior rectal arteries are unpaired. The internal iliac artery, each internal iliac artery approximately four centimeters long, uh, begins anterior to the sacroiliac joint at the bifurcation of the common iliac artery and descends posteriorly to the greater sciatic foramen. The internal iliac artery is the artery of the pelvis, however, it also supplies branches to the buttocks. 
medial tight regions and the perineum. The internal iliac artery supplies most of the blood to the pelvic viscera as well as supplying the musculoskeletal part of the pelvis and the gluteal region. The internal iliac artery begins at the level of the fortis between L5 and S1 vertebrae, where it is closed by the ureter. It is separated from the sacroiliac joint by the internal iliac vein and the lumbosacral trunk. The internal iliac artery passes posteromedially into the lesser pelvis, medial to the external iliac vein and obturator nerve and lateral to the peritoneum. Although variations are frequent, the internal iliac artery commonly ends at the superior edge of the greater sciatic foramen by dividing into anterior and posterior divisions. The branches of the anterior divisions are mainly visceral. It also has two parietal branches that pass to the buttocks and thigh. The arrangement of the visceral branches is variable. The following are branches of the anterior division of the internal iliac artery. Umbilical artery. This vessel runs anteroinferiorly between the urinary bladder and the lateral wall of the pelvis. It gives all the superior vesical artery that supplies numerous branches to the fundus of the urinary bladder. Before birth, the umbilical arteries carry blood from the fetus to the placenta for reoxygenation. Postnatally, their distal parts atrophy and form fibrous cores. The medial umbilical ligaments, right, that's the name of it. They raise poles of peritoneum, the medial umbilical poles, the room on the deep surface of the anterior abdominal wall. The obturator artery. The origin of this vessel is variable. Usually it arises close to the umbilical artery where it is crossed by the ureter and then runs anterior inferiorly on the obturator fascia on the lateral wall of the pelvis and passes between the obturator nerve and vein. It then leads the pelvis through the obturator canal and supplies muscle of the thigh. Within the pelvis, the obturator artery gives soft muscular branches, nutrients arteries to the ilium and a pubic branch. The pubic branch arises just before the obturator artery leaves the pelvis. It ascends on the pelvic surface of the pubis to anastomose with a developed off the opposite side and the pubic branch of the inferior epigastric artery. A branch of the external iliac in a common vari variation 20% an aberrant obturator artery raises from the inferior epigastric artery and descends into the pelvis along the usual route of the pelvic branch. The extrapelvic distribution of the obturator artery is described with the lower limb. The inferior vesicle artery. This vessel occurs only in males. The inferior vesicle artery passes to the fundus of the urinary bladder, where it supplies the seminal vesicles, prostate, the fundus of the bladder, and the inferior part of the ureter. The branches to the ductus deferens, co-also vas deferens, and prostate are the artery of the ductus deferens and the prostatic artery. The artery of uh, the ductus deferens might arise from the superior vesicle artery. The middle rectal artery, the middle rectal artery might arise independently from the internal iliac artery and it might arise in a common with the inferior vesicle artery or the internal pudendal 
Ari. The middle rectal artery supplies the inferior part of the rectum. Anastomosis with the superior and inferior rectal arteries. It also supplies the seminal vesicles, uh, prostate, and vagina. Vaginal artery. This vessel is the female homologue to the inferior vesical artery. In the male, it runs anteriorly and then passes along the side of the vagina and where it supplies numerous branches to the anterior and posterior surfaces of the vagina. Posterior inferior parts of the urinary bladder and the pelvic part of the urethra. The anastomosis with the vaginal branch of the uterine artery. This vessel usually arises separately and di directly from the internal iliac artery, but it might arise from the umbilical artery. It is the female homologue to the artery of the ductus deferens in the male. It descends on the lateral wall of the pelvis, anterior to the internal iliac artery, and enters the root of the pro ligament where it passes superior to the lateral part of the fornix of the vagina to reach the lateral margin of the uterus. The uterine artery passes anteriorly and superior to the ureter near the lateral part of the fornix of the vagina. On reaching the side of the cervix, the uterine artery divides into large superior branch that supplies the body and fundus of the uterus and a small vaginal branch that supplies the cervix and vagina. The urine artery pursues a tortuous course along the lateral margin of the uterus and ends when its ovarian and tubal branches anastomose with the ovarian and tubal branches of the ovarian artery between the layers of the broad ligament. Internal pudendal artery. This vessel, larger in males than, than females, passes inferior laterally anterior to the piriformis muscle and sacral plexus. It leaves the, between the Piriformis and coccygeus muscle by passing through the inferior part of the greater sciatic foramen. The internal pudendal artery then passes around the posterior aspect of the um, isquional fossa through the lesser sciatic foramen. The internal pudendal artery, along with the internal pudendal vein, and branches of the pudendal nerve passes to the pudendal canal in the lateral walls of the ischianal fossa. As it exceeds the pudendal canal medial to the ischial tuberosity, the internal pudendal artery divides into its terminal branches, the deep and dorsal arteries of the penis and clitoris.